Adam, and this is Adam Makes Beer. Today we are gonna talk about how we handle sanitizing a tank in order to get it ready for either wort or for beer. We're gonna be sanitizing and purging a bright tank to get ready to transfer a finished beer into it so we can clarify it and carbonate it and get it ready for package. In a brewery, the whole CIP clean in place or sanitize in place process is the super majority of what we do. Since we're working with a bright tank today, we're gonna start with the tank already being clean and then running our sanitizing process on it. You're also gonna hear me discuss the fact that we're gonna be purging that tank. And when I say purging, it means that we're gonna be evacuating as much atmosphere as possible out of that tank, replacing it with CO2. Having your finished beer contact as little oxygen as possible is absolutely crucial to the shelf stability of your beer and your quality of your beer overall. None of our processes are perfect. We're always looking to improve them. If you see something that you think we can tighten up on, um, maybe we did it and it wasn't in the, in the episode, but we'll, we'll let you know. Please comment any questions, anything like that as we go. But yeah, that's gonna be the deal. We're gonna check out sanitizing a tank. What you're looking at me doing right now is I am building out the tank. I'm putting all the parts on and everything that I'm going to need to be cleaning it. I'm also hooking up all the hoses that are connected to the pump that are actually going to help set up that CIP loop. You saw me just add some water through a white hose to the side of the tank and then a little bit of chemical and water in through that port on the side. Right now I'm utilizing the ultrasonic cleaner. Then I'm gonna run that cycle for about 15 minutes as I explain in the video. Okay, so this is our build for sanitizing a bright tank. We're utilizing the centrifugal pump right here where liquid goes into the face here and then is pumped out to the top here. And so these are the two lines that I'm gonna be using to transfer beer out of the fermenter or FV into the bright tank. That's why you're gonna see some various builds on the end of them. This gives me some additional flexibility with some of my processes, and I'll explain that as we go. Right now, you can kind of hear that pump running, and what we're doing is, is we're drawing liquid out of the bottom of the tank here. It loops around this tubing, this hose, and goes into the face of the pump, and then it's coming back out down this line, and then right back up to here. And so what's happening is, is the CIP arm at the top, I have a mixture of paracetic acid in the tank, which is a no rinse sanitizer when it's done at your provider's recommended dosages, which is why you saw me use a flow meter for water right here to add water to the tank. And then I measure that out carefully and add it through that same port. But anyhow, the liquid is being pulled from the bottom of the tank and being returned up to the top here. And it's going on up and then down to that, uh, to right into the center of the top of the tank. There's a spray ball up there that spins and sends the sanitizer hitting the top of the tank, all over the tank, and it sheets this tank and comes down, collects in the bottom, and is returned to the pump. As I'm spinning the tank, I'm also gonna be setting up my little ultrasonic cleaner here. Right now I have it filled, uh, all the parts for my carbonation stone filled and ready to go. I have an iodine solution in there and I'm gonna shake that for 15 minutes and I'll show you what it looks like when I turn it on. So when I'm cleaning the parts to my carbonation stone that I'm gonna be putting into the bright tank, um, I utilize this, this is an ultrasonic cleaner. Um, you can hear it rattling away. Uh, probably won't come through on this, but you can actually see motion inside the container there. It's just a way that helps to get the sanitizer deep into, especially that, especially that uh, carbonation stone. That carbonation stone is super porous. It's made of stainless steel, very small areas to it. So we use this ultrasonic cleaner in order to handle those. I sanitize that as I'm sanitizing the tank. I will be building the carbonation stone and uh, putting it into this port in the tank. Uh, this other port will serve as our sample valve 
We're spinning this tank for, for 15 minutes and then for five minutes uh, on each port. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I've just run my 15 minutes uh, that is necessary uh, for my sanding cycle for the tank. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that I hit these ports as well. These ports are essentially what is a shadow. It's an area of the tank that's not gonna get hit with the sanitizer. So I have to hook up and make sure that those ports are getting hit as well. Same concept though. This out portion of the pump is hooked up to the port that is gonna be cleaned. And then I turn my cycle on. I will turn my pump on more slowly right here so it doesn't create a vortex. I've had some issues with that, um, with these brights. But anyway, so I'm gonna open it back up and get this port sanded for another five minutes. All right, so right here, I'm putting my carbonation stone together and I'll show you how to build that assembly. To be honest, I'm looking towards swapping these out and I just haven't done it yet. It's an old rig from the original system. And basically what's happening here is we have a situation where CO2 can be injected here. We have the triclover fitting for the tank right here, and then a gasket that'll sit inside. And it'll help to sandwich this stone in. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna increase the surface area of uh, CO2 making contact with the beer. It's gonna help get the carbonation into solution a bit more readily. This particular rig for this is a bit on the uh, fussy side. But you can see on my carbonation stone, there's some heat marks on there uh, from some people that have used it in the past. This is one of the elements that was used with this system. But yeah, I'm gonna build it like this, make sure it's lined up as well as I can. I'm gonna put it back in sanding the whole thing. When I'm done sanding the, the final part, the gas part, that's actually gonna, that's actually gonna hold this. I'm gonna take this whole thing out. I'm gonna push gas through it because this holds a surprising amount of sanitizer. And then I'm gonna spray it all as well as I can with ISO, blow it out again, and then attach it to the tank. All right, I just finished my five minutes on this port, uh, meaning I'm gonna seal it up. I'm gonna move the whole thing over to my final port. Sometimes I like to use elbows on this rather than just going straight off the tank because I feel like it can take some of the pressure off uh, those connections. Pumps back on. In another five minutes, I'm gonna detach that and we're gonna start draining this tank and purging it with CO2 to prepare it for transfer. I like to purge quite a bit. And at this stage in the process, your your big enemies for, for the beer are really, you know, obviously sanitation, um, but also uh, oxidation, right? Uh, it's going to increase the rate at which if your uh, stales, it's going to kill uh, some volatiles uh, that you want to stick around. So I usually really go out of my way to, to really purge as much as possible. There's a podcast by uh, the Master Brewers Association where they talk about purging and they'll recommend purging a vessel like this, which is a 15 barrel bright tank, purging it for goodness gracious, I need to do it for 90 minutes total. So even even while I'm pushing that one side over there still, I'm still sanding that one side, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting some CO2 into the tank. I make sure that my CIP arm is open when I do that, so there's somewhere for that pressure to go. But I am gonna start pushing some CO2 at a rate of five uh, PSI through the side arm of this tank. All right, so I'm gonna add that stone to this tank. I'm going to blow it out. And you might be surprised how much liquid there is in here. But there's a decent amount. So then, 
I'm gonna go ahead and spray it really well with ISO. Blow it out again. Then I do it like this. So I'll hold that right here. I'll take this whole rig off. And I'll get that inserted into the tank. And at this point, the tank is essentially built. And all I'm doing is, I'm now purging through the sidearm that I set up before. I do need to get the liquid out of here, so I'm gonna drain all that out. And then I'm gonna take measures to purge the bright tank and then also purge the sanitized line that's gonna be connected to the fermenter. Okay, so that's going to wrap up our tutorial on sanitizing and purging a bright tank. When we sanitize a tank, whether it's a fermenter or a bright tank, it's basically this process that we just did. When we're sanitizing a fermenter, we don't have to purge it out with CO2 like we are with a bright tank. That's really the only difference. So as far as the purging, the purging and sanitizing the bright tank goes, is we would completely purge that tank and then we would transfer a finished beer into it so we could clarify it, carbonate it, to then move into either kegs or cans, okay? That's basically the deal. <laughs> so listen, this is gonna be one of our tutorial series of videos that we're gonna be doing. They're gonna be a little bit more content heavy and they're really meant to kind of give you a practical idea, maybe even a little on the technical side of what's actually happening back here in the brewery process-wise. Hopefully it's something that you enjoy. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, please leave those in the comments down below. If you got any value out of the video, please give it a like and a subscribe. We appreciate it, and we will see you later. Goodbye.